going on YouTube? Clover Bells here back with another Scarlet Violet video and today we're going to be recapping the Santiago regionals from this past weekend. It's a rather small regional, just about 153 players. It wasn't streamed so all we can really do is look at the data and see what it is uh, that was being played and again the reason why we want to do, look at a small regional like this is because it's so close to the Los Angeles regionals this upcoming weekend and any kind of edge that you can have in terms of like updated team and usage stats is always going to be good. So this way you can make some last minute preparations uh, heading into the weekend if you are competing or if you're just trying to gather more regulation G data and see what could be the best team for you to use moving forward. Because again, this is a four month format, uh, but Los Angeles has been building up for quite a while. And, you know, it's, it's all also leading up to NAIC, right? So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some of the top teams. We're going to look at some niche options and then we'll make some predictions moving forward as we head into Los Angeles. All right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the top, top squads. All right. So to help us look at the data, we're going to head back into the Lab Mouse website. And again, shout out to all the guys at Lab Mouse for... We're putting together all the data for us so this way videos like this are, are possible so let's look at the winning team so basically it was a zamazenta team so that's two regionals now that zamazenta has won but not only is it in the first place winning team it's also in the second place winning team so zamazenta was winning no matter what happened in the finals but it's also in the fourth place winning team and then even though it barely just missed eighth place there there's another zamazenta team in ninth place so there's a lot of zamazenta you know within top eight okay and we're gonna look at this uh, and examine this a little bit further because now it's not just a, a lucky win, right? Because now we can really, really consider Zamazenta a threat. And now you have to consider your team building uh, to have an answer and some checks into Zamazenta. Otherwise, you're going to get steamrolled. So, um, and you know, again, if I told you that back in Sword and Shield, all right, you thought it would be crazy, but we don't live in Sword and Shield anymore. It's a different time. This is Scarlet and Violet where we are living with the fact that Zamazenta has body press. It's just amazing how one move makes all the difference. Anyway, so let's look at the winning team here. So Hans Bizarro is looking at Zamazenta Pelipper stuff. Uh, very standard, uh, in all honesty, right? You got the wide guard stuff uh, with the weather ball. Uh, Rocky Helmet instead of a sash because the sash is on the Chen Pao. Makes sense. But look at Fluttermane here. Support Fluttermane with Taunt and Icy Wind with a booster energy. So it's not your, you know, typical choice spec set that you might find. But it's booster energy. And giving you speed control with Icy Wind is essential, especially in a, in a meta that is surrounded by very fast restrictors like Calyrex or, or, you know, even another Zombie Center, for example, right? Um, and then over there, you have the Ogre Pond Heart Flame, okay, in a rain team. So that's also interesting, but it makes a lot of sense still, uh, just in terms of what you can get out of your Chen Pao and your Rillaboom, which is the other side of the team, right? So uh, lots of physical damage being passed around, but I do like Chen Pao. Uh, in this current format, uh, you know, and even with Zamazenta, it looks really, really good. Then if we look into the second place winning team, it also has a Pelipper team, okay? This time with... No, wait, hold on a second. All right, to help us look at the data, we're going to head back into the Lab Mouse website once again. Again, sh shout out to all the guys at Lab Mouse for the hard work that they do. Without them, this uh, video is not possible. All right, so if we look carefully, the first place winning team has a Zamazenta, okay? But in addition to that, the second place winning team also has a Zamazenta. So it was a mirror matchup and Zamazenta was winning another regional no matter what. So that's two regionals now for Zamazenta. But in addition, look at the fourth place winning team, another Zamazenta team. And then even though it just merely missed top eight, there's another Zamazenta team in ninth place. Okay. And even in 11th over here. So Zamazenta, oh, 12th even. Look, Zamazenta is going to be the most common restricted heading into Los Angeles, right? And if you're not prepared, okay, then you're just going to get steamrolled. So be ready. Uh, for your Zamazenta answers and your checks. Uh, and if you want to use it yourself, uh, then hence reference this uh, just to look at some different builds that people have been doing. But let's look at the first place winning team. All right, 10 and 1, Hans Pizarro over here. It's Pelipper, okay? That's a very standard, easy way to start with right, in terms of building with Zamazenta. Just, just throw the Pelipper, throw the bird in there. You get weather control, you get wide guard. What's not to like, okay? Well, Pelipper, arguably, besides Incineroar and Amoongus, the, the best support Pokemon right now in Regulation G, just because of that wide guard move, okay? Then you've got Chen Pao, Rillaboom stuff, so lots of physical damage being passed around. Then you have Ogre Pond, Heart Flame, same thing, getting a boost from Chen Pao. Uh, it's going to do a lot of damage. You get Redirection here as well, so that's nice. You can help set up your, your Iron Defenses. And then you look at Fluttermane here, support Fluttermane, right? Booster Energy, 
with taunt and icy wind okay so you can deny other setup you can deny you know trick room stuff then you can get speed control for yourself with icy wind very very nice i like this team this is pretty cool then if we look at the second place winning team uh from luciano it's also pelipper and there's incinero and among us hence that backbone that we've been referencing uh throughout the format of regulation g very easy to start with right you pick a restricted then you slap on instant among us pelipper there's four pokemon right there your last two are your flex slots raging bolt you might as well that's another one that's also really good and speed control this way with electro rep as opposed to the icy wind here's your taunt user and incineroar rather than a flutter main and an urshifu uh single strike for the caloric shadow rider matchup okay again pretty pretty standard pretty good so far then if we look into the fourth place winning team guess what this has a pelipper guess what it also has incineroar mungus guess what else it also has raging bolt okay the splashable four uh and then you got Flutterman again, uh, and this one also has Taunt, but no Icy Wind. That's okay. Uh, you do have Electro up here on the Raging Bolt. Uh, but again, Brett, you can see kind of see the common ways and the common cores that all these Zamazenta teams are building. And it, just, it makes sense because it works. But a one that's a little less common is this one right here at ninth place. This is a more offensive team with Dragonite, Chen Pao, and Entei. This is more of a Regulation uh, D kind of idea, right? Where you're getting a lot of damage here. But... Uh, again, the Entei is something that we've spotlighted in the previous video. One of our favorite niche options, along with Volcarona, coming into uh, that Los Angeles region uh, in terms of more meta development. But look at this, Sacred Fire uh, with Chen Pao. And again, uh, this was still around for a while. You don't have to commit your restricted slot, for example, like a Ho-Oh to this. Uh, Entei is free, inner focus, can't get intimidated, stomping tantrum, decent tech uh, into Maridon. And then you have Rillaboom for that Maridon matchup. You can change the terrain on it. And then Chen Pao again with Ice Cold Crash is going to do a lot of damage because it's a Dragon type. And then Dragonite just doing what Dragonite does. Just clicking extreme speeds, you know, Terra Normal, one-shotting a lot of different things. There is a Caloric Shadow Rider matchup, but it's still okay. Now, uh, if we look at this team uh, at 11th place, this one is a little bit more standard uh, still, right? But again, now you have the Cornerstone. Cornerstone has he has seen a rise in usage in this format, I have to say. But again, uh, everything else pretty standard. You got your icy wind flutter main with taunts. You've got your raging bolt, uh, not with electro, but you do have the snarl stuff, so that's still pretty good. You've got your chan power. You've got your pelipper. Everything has a pelipper these days. You know, it just goes so well with a steel type. Okay, and again, you're gonna need your zamazenta if you need to. Do something into Terrapagos, right? And speaking of Terrapagos, uh, that was the more or less the the third place team, okay? Uh, but not just third; it also came in eighth. It came in tenth. Uh, it came in thirteenth. So Terrapagos and Zamazenta are dominating the format right now, and Zamazenta does very well into Terrapagos. So you're gonna need something uh, to handle Zamazenta if you are using a Terrapagos, and these teams have that answer, uh, or they have multiple answers actually. So we'll examine that. So let's look at the third place team. Let's look at Dorian's team here. And uh, it has Cover Cloak Terrapagos with the Calm Mind stuff. So a little bit different than what we, we've been seeing lately with, with the Choice Spec stuff. This can still work. Okay, you've got the Clefairy with Friend Guard. Clefairy, very good option uh, because, again, you, you're a Fairy type. You click Follow Me. You redirect the Fighting move away from Zamazenta, and it doesn't do a lot of damage because you're a Fairy type. Uh, and then from there, you've got Tornadus. You've got Incineroar and Ogre Pond. Well, being, again, more standard options. Still playing the offensive idea, right? The hyper-offensive idea. But you've got your, your, your support options here. And then you have Volcarona. So Volcarona does very well into Zamazenta because, again, the bug typing, it's going to resist the fighting type attacks. You're able to also go for Quiver Dances and then outspeed the entire meta and hit them really hard with strong hitting flamethrowers and also some strong hitting bug buzzes, right? So Volcarona is another one just like Entei, that is rising in usage. It's a great tech option. So if you're going to play Terrapagos, I definitely recommend Clefairy. I also def definitely recommend Volcarona. A team like this is going to be good. So definitely pick it up if you want to play Terrapagos. And again, it's up to you if you want to play the choice spec stuff. But I do think these options are going to be great. Uh, just if you want to play that matchup. So shout out to Dorian for doing relatively well with, with uh, Terrapagos. Damn. How about this one at 8th place? 6-3. But... Again, still a Clefairy, right? So still similar ideas. Again, this one has Life Dew, so you got a little bit of recovery here. Uh, then you've got Instant Rillaboom and Incineroar here uh, to do what they do best. Click Fake Out, click Surging Strikes, might as well. 
give you positioning, click taunt for disruption. All right, Raging Bolt here. Do oh, Life Orb Raging Bolt. That's pretty cool. But um, this is also another Calm Mind Terrapicos. So no choice specs here. You've got the Redirector here with Clefairy. So uh, free Calm Minds. And then you have the double fake out idea. So this is a little bit more of a traditional Terrapicos team um, than what we've been seeing leading into this regional. Then over here at 10th place, uh, Sebastian Escalante. Th and again, this one is now the more standard way of playing it, right? This is the choice specs idea with the Tailwind, the hyper offensive way of playing Terrapicos. You've got the Chiyu here to make you do a little bit more damage because it beats a Ruin. It's Sash. You've got Amoongus uh, for your Trick Room matchup. Urshifu, Rapid Strike, along with Rain Dance from Tornadoes. It's going to do a lot, of course. Uh, and then you've got Taunt here, right? I feel like everything has Taunt on a team. You kind of need it if you want to deny setup, if you want to deny... Uh, speed control options, you know, whether it be another Tailwind or another Trick Room. Uh, and it doesn't have to come from a Pangster mod. There's lots of things that get taunt. Uh, for example, on the Kyogre team, Serena had taunt, right? Um, but here's another one uh, with Raging Bull. Uh, this one is the Snarl stuff with the Salt Vest, so still very, very bulky. Uh, this is another one that you can pick up uh, if you want to play Terrapicos. But again, uh, you, you know, your Zamazenta uh, answer, or not really necessarily answer, but a way to deal with it, you've got the Amoongus. To redirect the fighting move then you've got the chiyu to pressure the steel type slash terra grass option uh, on the zamazenta it's gonna do well so you've got you you've got answers here so uh shout outs to Seb sebastian over there for doing a great job how about this one this one looks very similar uh joaquin salerno at 13th place here uh yeah pretty much the same thing right with the choice specs terrapagos choice scarf i'm sorry focus sash chiyu tornadoes here with taunt Okay, see how many teams that we look at so far have taunt? A lot of them. So if you don't have taunt, throw it. Okay, make sure you have a taunt user on your team. Let's look at this one here at 14th. Um, again, this is another one with Volcarona and Clefairy. You got Raging Bolt here. And again, this is this looks like uh, the third place team from, uh, oh, what, what's it? Uh, Dorian, right? And then again, the Incineroar with Goggles and Taunt. Yeah, and this is pretty much more or less the same idea. Is it the same idea? Yeah, I think it is. So you can definitely play it like this. Uh, and again, I've shown you a couple niche options, and I do like Volcarona. Like I said, I think it's going to do well uh, leading into Los Angeles. I, I think in the hands of the right player, right, along with Clefairy, the, this kind of Terrapagos team uh, can definitely make a, a day two run and a day two push. So, you know, quote me on that one. Calyrex Shadow Rider finally top cut a regional, and it didn't just only top cut. There were two Calyrex Shadow Riders within the top eight, and we'll look at those in a second, but I think... Uh, what you can consider now with Calyrex is, uh, look, you, you're going to need a strong fighting type, right? You're going to need either something like a Kamo, a Mianxia, or an Urshifu, something to really help you against an Incineroar, for example, or even something to help you against a Terrapicos, because Calyrex can't really hit it. You're a ghost type. So I think a strong fighting type is necessary uh, on all Calyrex Shadow Rider teams. That being said, you can also have a good, solid redirector like the Clefairy, uh, again, Friend Guard is going to be good in helping Calyrex survive some key hits. You can also help it set up uh, because of Follow Me. Then you can also click Helping Hand, something that Amoongus can't really do for you that Clefairy can, right? So I do like Clefairy here along with Calyrex with some fighting type. And then after that, maybe a Speed Control mod, whether it be something like a Tornadus or whether it be something like a Whimsicott is also pretty good. And I think that's where you start with your core. Give me a Clefairy, give me a fighting type, give me a Tailwind mod, uh, and then give me the Calyrex. And that's your four for a core. Um, and if we look at these teams, they're, they're going to follow that kind of idea. So let's look at Paul Reese's team over here. Fifth place. So here's the Calyrex. Here's the Tailwind Mom with Whimsicott. So this is going to help you um, outspeed certain things that either are going for other Tailwinds or other Icy Winds. But this is the Nasty Plot setup. Okay. And then what's interesting here is it's, it's got Pollen Puff. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but again, Incineroar here with Fake Out Pressure able to help you set up the Nasty Plot. Ogre Pond must bring your Redirector. Uh, and then here's your combo, Iron Defense Body Press stuff, Smart Tech Choice with Shadow Claw. That's going to be good into the mirror. Then you have Overcoat, right? So goodbye, Amoongus slash Rage Party shenanigans. So nice idea here from Paul Rees uh, to include the combo. I do like it a lot uh, with Calyrex here. And then your Redirector uh, is not, it's not a Clip Fairy, but it is the, the Ogre Pond Wellspring. So it can do a pretty solid job here. You get a water, Fire Water Grass Core with Incineroar as well. Snarl support from the Raging Bull is also going to be good. Raging Bolt Incineroar is a great lead in a lot of times, right? Because you can control the pace of the game with the Intimidate support, the parting shots, and the snarls just to help Calyrex get in position 
So this way you can pick up KOs with Nasty Plot slash Ash Barrage, right? So I like this from Paul Rees. Really, really good. And notice also, let me go back to Steam real quick. I know I closed it. But again, this is a focused Ash Calyrex, right? So is that the only way to play it? Let's see. Let's look at the seventh place team. Uh, again, another Calyrex within the top cut. This one is Covert Cloak, right? And this is pretty interesting. This is probably for like the Icy Wind Snarl stuff. Uh, I guess he really hates that. But again, it's another understandable item for the Calyrex. Uh, and the Sash is on the Urshifu uh, Single Strike here, which is also pretty good. Again, another good solid fighting type here. Then you've got Incineroar Gastrodon. Uh, Gastrodon's an interesting choice here. Again, Storm Drain for the Urshifu stuff, for the Kyogre matchup. Uh, it's going to help you a lot. Then a Ground type, right? So Ground type for Gastrodon is really good into Maridon. So now it's forced to click uh, either its Dragon move or its its uh, you know Dazzling Gleam Fairy move. And it's if, if it's Choice Specs locked into an Electric move, you just win the game with Gastrodon off the rip. So I do expect to see a little bit of Gastrodon usage rise uh, as we head into Los Angeles, right? Because it just does well into a lot of different matchups. I just named a couple of Restricteds that Gashadon can do well in. And again, in a restricted format, niche options like Gashadon, like Chen Pao, or, or not Chen Pao, uh, uh, Mian Chao, they all do relatively well because they give you something uh, very specific for those matchups that you your team really needs after you've supported your core uh, for your restricted, right? But again, after that, it's just instant raging bolt Fluttermane. Again, support Fluttermane uh, with Icy Wind and Taunt. That's going to be a thing to consider moving forward. And you'll see a lot more Fluttermanes probably do this and drop the Choice Specs idea. Uh, but again, a uh, nice idea from Francisco to include the Gashon on over here. So we'll see if that becomes a thing in Los Angeles. Then if we go down, there's a couple more Calyrex Shadow Rider teams. There's one over here at 17 place. 6 and 2 is pretty good. Just missing the top 16. But it's another Clefairy uh, Redirector here. So... Um, that's pretty good. Then you have Incin, Rillaboom, and Urshifu, your Firewater Grass card. This is a Citrus Berry Nasty Plot setup. So we've seen three different items. We've seen Cobra Cloak, we've seen Citrus Berry, and we've seen Focus Sash. So these are all very, very playable. But again, you also have Nasty Plot here, so that's still good. Uh, again, setting up the Nasty Plot is going to be important. And you don't have a, ta a Tornadoes uh, for Tailwind support, but you do have Thunderous here, which is pretty cool. Uh, you've got Taunt. Uh, you, you've got Eerie Impulse. So you got a lot of disruption and damage mitigation. You don't need the speed necessarily. You've got Rain Dance too, um, which is interesting, right? There's Rain Dance, but no Wild Bolt Storm. So that's uh, a thing that we'll have, we'll have to take a look at. But again, that's going to be useful against the Karaidon matchup, right? Just to take away its sun, go for the Rain Dance, uh, and then let Urshifu uh, kill everything that's not renamed the Karaidon. So that's also pretty nice. Uh, but again, Clefairy, Calyrex, this is another kind of balanced team, more or less, with the Thunders. And then after that, uh, so that, that was a couple Calyrex teams there. That was about three. But then we have one more here at 19th. And then we don't see Calyrex Shadow Rider for a while. But here's the Mian Shao, right? Again, another fighting type that we talked about that can do well here. This is Clear Amulet Calyrex. Now, that's four items that we've seen from Calyrex uh, within the top results in this regional. But it's still also a Nasty Plot Calyrex. Here we go, Mian Chao with the wide guard, with the feint, uh, and taunt. Again, there's that taunt idea. No fake out right away from the Mian Chao. Uh, I mean, you got two already from Rillaboom and Incineroar. Do you really need a third? <laughs> um, here's your Tailwind Mon, okay, with the Tornadus. This is Sunny Day Tornadus. Uh, no Rain Dance. Here's the Ogre Pond Cornerstone. Definitely going to benefit from Rain Dance. I'm sorry, Sunny Day, for sure. Here's your Redirector. So you got Intimidate, Double Fake Out, Redirection, uh, you've got Taunt, you've got Speed Control with Tailwind, you've got some setup here uh, with the Calyrex. So again, another kind of team that makes a lot of sense uh, if you want to pick up a Calyrex Shadow Rider team. But as we scroll down, we don't really see it again uh, because, uh, you know, it just was not there at that moment. There's another one here at 5-3. I, I just missed it somewhere, I think. Uh, but I believe it's a Screens team. Uh, yeah, here it is. Yeah, it's a Grimmsnarl Screens team. Uh, this is the Focus Sash idea. All right, but here's the Amoongus, here's the Incineroar, there's the Rillaboom, here's Grimmsnarl Screens. So no Clefairy, but you do have Screens. So in a way, it's it's somewhat playing the Clefairy role here. And then you also get Thunder Wave out of it, right, for a little bit of Parahax. But this is also the uh, Calm Mind Raging Bolt. Uh, and then this is Nasty Plot Calyrex as well. So again, double setup here. But again, uh, hopefully some of these ideas have inspired you to play Calyrex. But I think the template is pretty clear Give me uh, a good solid fighting type. Give me uh, a speed control mon, whether it be Tornadus or Whimsicott or something else. And then give me 
you know, something like a Clefairy or an Amoongus. And then from there, my last two options are my flex slots for Calyrex Shadow Rider. All right, Calyrex Ice Rider, on the other hand, did not do as well, but it still did somewhat okay. You still got a sixth place team over here from Juan Sarlano. Uh, this one is with Incineroar Amoongus, uh, very standard backbone. No Pelipper, though. Instead, you're getting Raging Bolt and Gundango here uh, with the Nasty Plot, Make It Rain stuff. Uh, and then the Raging Bolt here is a Volt Switch Raging Bolt with Assault Vest. But you still get Electro Whip here along with the Urshifu Single Strike. So this is another variation that you can play it, you know, if you don't want to do the Pelipper stuff. Because after that, it's pretty much just all Pelipper Calyrex, right? So a couple 6-2s here with the same kind of core with the Incin, the Amoongus, the Pelipper, and the Urshifu Rapid Strike. And then you have the Raging Bolt uh, to round things out. This is pretty much our rental for the month of May. But again, the only difference now uh, that you have to be aware of is that this Urshifu Rapid Strikes, they're going to be running coaching, all right? So this way you can boost your Calyrex, uh, you know, from an attack point of view and a defensive point of view, right? You can also use that on your Incineroar too. So you can make the Incin uh, a decent threat if you want to play that route or in that turn. But definitely consider uh, coaching on your Urshifu Rapid Strike if you want to play this six uh, with the Calyrex Ice Rider. Because after that, it's pretty much all what they have here. But this one, interestingly, at 5 and 3, let me click this one. This one has an Iron Hands. And we're going to speak about Iron Hands a little bit more with the next Restricted. You can probably already guess. But it's slowly coming back, right? Fake Out, pretty standard Iron Hands set here. But this is Fluttermane Chiyu stuff. No insane Amoongus, even though you do have the Amoongus here. So it's, you do have a Fast Mode here with the Chiyu and the Fluttermane. And again, Icy Wind Taunt stuff from the Flutter. Uh, it's focus as you no choice specs, no choice scarf. Okay, Pelipper here with the Covert Cloak. You've got White Guard, Weather Ball, Hurricane stuff. So everything is pretty standard. Uh, but the Fluttermane Chiyu uh, is interesting to see here on the Calyx Ice Rider. You would think that would be something for like the Shadow Rider. I would not have expected to see that on the Ice Rider, right? But uh, like I said, with Iron Hands, uh, let's talk about the next Restricted that has kind of brought it back into the meta. All right, of course, we're going to be talking about the Iron Hands Maridon idea. So Maridon, again, has seen uh, an increase in usage ever since Rajan Ball's team has taken the meta by storm and all the apology forms went out. You're going to see it again, okay? And it's a pretty constant formula that we're seeing with it right now. You've got Maridon. Then you have the Terra Ground stuff. So, uh, you know, Maridons, they like to either run the, the Choice Specs, Discharge idea, uh, and then from there, uh, they like to run the Ursa Luna. Okay, uh, whether it be the physical or the special one, but let me just put that over here. So here's the Blood Moon Ursa Luna, and then you have the Fergram. Okay, these three, okay, they did not meet Maridon. We already knew what these three could do. These three have done the job in previous uh, formats, okay, months ago. Uh, then Maridon just made this better, okay, because you're getting a big damage dealer. Now you get Discharge. So the fur graphs, sometimes they can be terra ground as well. Not all of them. Sometimes they still prefer the fairy stuff. But you've got options here, okay? Then all you need is a Tailwind Setter, something like a Whimsicott or a Tornadus. We'll just put Tornadus for now. And then this last slot is usually your flex slot. Usually it's something like a Chiyu, uh, or it could be something else. But the Chiyu just makes everything here do a ton of damage. And the only physical option that you're going to be having is Iron Hands, right? But again, like I've been telling people, Iron Hands was a top three Mon for the longest time without an ability, right? Before Miraidon came into play, people were dominating regionals and tournaments with Iron Hands without an ability, okay? Nobody used this core tribe, okay? But now all of a sudden you add Miraidon, now you can have a clear amulet Iron Hands and get an attack boost and not have to worry about Intimidate. Now this thing is gonna be doing a ton of damage, okay? Because again, consider the set, Fake Out, plus one Wild Charges, plus one Drain Punches, and then you consider Ice Punch for the tech move. Look at this, base 140 attack stat with a plus one boost. If you, if you, you know, throw out the Maridon, that's a lot of damage. And then, like I said, the Choice Specs idea with the Discharge, sometimes these Chiyus, now they're also going to be doing uh, Terra Ground because you could do this next to Chiyu and do tons of damage. So this is like a pretty standard Maridon team when you think about it. Um, sometimes you'll see Whimsicott in this slot, or even the Chiyu sometimes may be a flex slot. But let's look at the results. So let's go at Maridon. Okay, right here. This is the this is the team, right? Besides Whimsicott, uh, we pretty much have it right here. So look, Iron Hands with a clear amulet. Then you've got the Choice Scarf Chiyu. I love Choice Scarf Chiyu. Again, the fact that I can outspeed Calyrex without any speed control is important. Then I've got Furigaf here with the Electric Sea getting the defense boost. This is Terra Fairy, so no Terra Ground here, but the Chiyu is Terra Ground, right? 
Um, and then here's the Specs Maridon, and here's the Blood Moon Ursaluna. Very standard team. If you want to play Maridon, definitely pick up a team like this. Uh, if you really want to put Tornadus instead of the Whimsicott, it'll still do more or less the same thing. Okay. Then after that, how about Seraledge here? Uh, again, I do expect a couple teams to try and utilize it because it does so well into Zamazenta. Right? Seraledge is great. Uh, you know, Fire Ghost with Flash Fire. Like, how are you going to get hit? you don't <laughs> so it's a really really nice and interesting tech option to have on a team okay so definitely consider Seralich if you really need a zamazenta matchup this is the this is going to do that for you as well as karidon too right so definitely consider it if you haven't uh, had a check already but the same formula right Furigraph, terra ground blood moon or saluna here's the iron hands with the assault vest the clear amulet is on the Seralich instead uh that's why it's not on the iron hands and then you have Whimsicott here. So this is actually pretty good. I would even play a team like this. I like this a lot. This is very good. Shout out to Camilla for doing this. Uh, then over here, Miguel. Again, Choice Scarf Chiyu. Instead of the Whimsicott, you've got Tornadus. Same idea, okay? It's following the template. Then you get some, some interesting stuff here. Like, you'll get the Ditto, okay? This is your flex slot, like I said. You don't have, even have a Chiyu here. You still get the, the same four with the Tailwind Setter. But now you add the ditto. This is the, I, I think this is the Aaron trailer idea with the ditto, right? So all you have to do is put it in at the right time. You get a free restricted, right? So definitely consider that. Um, and is this the Rajan variant, right? With the Ogre Pond Cornerstone? I believe it is. I'm not sure. I can't remember off the top of my head. It's been a long day. But uh, again, same idea uh, with that. Uh, then you'll get some interesting stuff with Iron Bale. I don't know about that. That's a little unproven. But at least as far as the stuff that I know that works... Look at all these Maridon teams over here, 5-3 and over. Uh, they know what they're doing. Not much from Kyogre this time around, but you do get one team over here at 6-2 from Ivan Charles. And of course, it does involve Serena. And I do think the Tornadus Kyogre Serena core is going to be good. Okay, again, the Serena really supporting the Kyogre uh, for the Rillaboom and Raging Bolt that can just click priority moves into Kyogre. So that's not great. But I do like also the Assault Vest on the Kyogre. I think it's very, very smart. Then you have the Urshifu Rapid Strike doing a ton of damage in the rain with Kyogre. Okay, so now you've got these four. Then again, support stuff with Incineroar, with Fake Out Pressure, Parting Shot, Will-O-Wisp, all those things. Then you have Fluttermane again, clicking Icy Wind for a little bit more speed control along with the Tornadus here. And the Serena has the taunt to be able to deny setup and other Trick Room stuff. So um, this is probably a really solid Kyogre team. If you really wanted to pick one up, you can definitely consider this. You can also do like Arkeladen stuff. Uh, I still think that's pretty good. Maybe even the double genie idea. But right now, just like pure Serena, Tornadus, Urshifu stuff is going to be good. Uh, there is another one. Uh, this, this, this was the uh, the Tang team, right? Right from Justin and Shilian Tang and Andrew Ding, right? With the Iron Jugulus as opposed to the Tornadus. Again, the Dark type uh, clicking Snarl. All, uh, all, in addition to Tailwind is also going to be good. Along with Accurate Hurricanes. Uh, with Kyogre over here. So you can definitely even consider that. But more or less, you still have some similar ideas with the Urshifu coming in here along with the Serena. And then the Fluttermane being the flex slots along with Incineroar. So definitely consider either of the Kyogre teams if you really wanted to, to bring it into the original. All right, so that's going to do it for our recap for now. And again, uh, just to summarize things, be ready for Zamazenta and Terrapagos. That's going to be number one and number two. Uh, I think this is finally the regional, right? We're given the size that where Calyrex Shadow Rider uh, can finally uh, make that day two impact. I think we've waited long enough. I think it's time for it to do uh, what it needs to do. The Pelipper stuff with Calyrex Ice Rider along with Instant Amoongus is also still going to be strong heading in there. Um, some niche options uh, that I think can still do well, like we talked about here. I do think we'll see Serilus for sure. I, I think it's just too good of an answer into Zamazenta and Karidon to, to not use. Uh, so definitely there's going to be some people picking this up for sure. Uh, expect some ground types like Tinglu and Landris. I do think the Landris is going to increase in usage just because it does so well into Maridon. Uh, and then from there, I do think Volcarona as well uh, can really do and punish uh, the job into some stuff like Zamazenta. Maybe not as well as Serilage, but I do think uh, it can really do a job there. And then, of course, the Chen Pao Entei Dragonite stuff uh, with a, another Restricted can also be very, very good. Um, I'm not so sure about Wo Chiang yet, uh, but you know maybe someone wants to use it. But it definitely has a place in Regulation G uh, if they're willing to explore it. Right? But I'm still sticking with these six as far as like sleeper niche options uh, to consider heading into Los Angeles. All right, so uh, let me know what you thought, uh, and let me know what you expect heading into Los Angeles. 
Uh, and again, if you still need some last minute preparation, you need uh, a little bit of last minute team building, make sure you check out our tier three uh, uh, sub on the channel. If you look in the video description below, as well as the pinned comment, we have a link to join the channel with that tier three sub. And then from there, we can do a team building session where we build the team from scratch together. We, uh, I'll show you how to do all the EVs uh, and whatnot and explain different matchups and how you want to play them. Uh, but again, check it out. Make sure you invest. Uh, it's, it's, it's a good investment. That's what I meant to say. Okay, we've helped a lot of people get CP at regionals before, and we intend to keep that going uh, heading into Los Angeles. All right, so that's going to do it for now, folks. We'll be back with another video in the next one. Peace out, and have a good one.